Okay, yeah. Okay, guys, so uh, in the last class we discussed about Git. We started with Git, you know, which which is uh, undoubtedly the start of the CI CD process and, you know, uh, and uh, developer workflow uh, depend very much on Git. And every time developer want to make some change in the code, they would want to push their changes into a Git repository and then uh, they make commit, right? That's what we discussed. Every time they finished some work, they will start making the commits and every commits that they make will be permanently recorded inside a Git repository. And there will be one Git repository within every developer laptop and there will be one Git repository on the remote uh, machine. And the remote repository is used for synchronizing between commits of developer laptop, right? And that is the purpose of remote repository. So uh, what I will do is I will just show you the agenda for today. I mean, what are the topics we are going to discuss for today? That would give you an understanding about uh, about our process, right? So the first thing yesterday we have seen how to set up a remote repository and how to set up a local repository. And now Tom and Jerry want to push and pull from the remote repository, right? So we will discuss about how Tom and Jerry can authenticate with the remote repository and work. And after that, we will see how Tom and Jerry will do the push and pull operation to the remote repository. We will take some sample code and add the sample code inside uh, one of their laptops and then they will push, they will make a commit and they will push the code into the remote repository. And then uh, we will see how they will, you know, keep doing push and pull operation as they work. And then uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it is not only editing that developer would do. Sometimes they have to rename a file. Sometimes they have to delete a file, right? All these things also needs to be done right some program that is no longer relevant so developer want to delete it or you know want to rename it uh, all these operations are possible in git and then we will discuss about git stash git stash is all about uh, how you can copy your local changes locally and get a free working copy a working copy that is in sync with the local repository whatever modification that you made in your working copy folder you can put those changes into a temporary queue so that you would get a clean workspace the workspace that is in sync with the local repository every modification that you made can be temporarily stored inside a different place that is called stash so we will talk about that and then we will talk about git patch and git branching these are some very very important concept very relevant to a devops engineer we will discuss that today and we will also talk about the best practices for branching or you can say the best practices for uh, a company to use git and that also we will discuss uh, today i mean if time permits so these are uh, the list of things which I want to discuss for the day. All right. Just for your information, you know, this would uh, help uh, reducing the confusion. So let us start. And uh, the first topic is Git authentication. So we are going to talk about how Tom and Jerry will authenticate themselves with the remote repository, right? Both Tom and Jerry, they are working on this project and they want to push and pull the code from the remote repository. First of all, they must authenticate themselves using their username and password or using some other method. They should authenticate. So we will talk about how a user can authenticate using SSH. Right, uh, you already know about SSH. SSH is what uh, the protocol that uh, we use. If you want to log in from one machine to the other machine, right? A 
anybody who want to log into a Linux machine, you can use SSH. So in case of Git also, it is kind of Tom is going to log into the Git server and pushing the code and pulling the code or similarly, Jerry does the same thing. They will connect or log into the remote Git server, Git repository. They will authenticate, they will use, log in using SSH and then they will push and pull the code. So uh, Tom and Jerry must have SSH access to the remote repository if they want to do the push and pull operation. There are other authentication methods as well. We are going to talk about SSH authentication, right? So let us start. All right, so you have Tom's laptop and then you have Jerry's laptop. So first let me, right? Assume this is uh, Tom's laptop and you also have Jerry's laptop. And both Tom and Jerry want to push and pull from this remote repository. And in order to do the push and pull operation, first of all, they must authenticate. So uh, what you need is, I mean, uh, to be uh, precise, what you need is you must create a private public key pair for SSH. This is the way how SSH authentication works. There must be a key pair, a private key and a public key. And anyone in the world, even Tom, can create a key pair, private and public key. And this key pair is special, right? Anybody who has the private key. And if you copy Tom private public key into the remote Git server, the public key of Tom, if it is copied into the remote Git server, then Tom will be able to connect to the Git server through SSH. This is the way how SSH works. So this key pair can be created by Tom or anyone in the world using some software on their computer. If Tom is using Linux, he can use SSH key gen on, from the command line. That would create a key pair. That means one private key and one public key. And uh, keep the private key within Tom's laptop. If the public key of Tom's laptop is copied into the remote server, then Tom can SSH to that remote server and Git uses SSH as the internal authentication mechanism. And that is exactly what I am trying to achieve here. And there are specific locations where the public key must be stored on the remote machine. I will show you that. So first of all, let me create a key pair. So both Tom will, uh, right, uh, Tom and Jerry, they both would create a key pair. Come on. Right, uh, Tom would create a key pair on his laptop. There will be a private key and there will be a public key. And whatever method Tom uses, Jerry can also use the same methods within his laptop. He can create his own private and public key. And both of their public key, I will copy to the remote Git server so that both Tom can SSH to the machine, Jerry can SSH to the machine. And yes, Git will internally use SSH protocol for the authentication purpose. So. First of all, let us create key pair on Tom's laptop and Jerry's laptop. So I'm going to log into both of their laptops. Let's do, let's see. Okay. So uh, I'm going to, this is, the Git server. I mean, uh, Tom's laptop, Jerry's laptop, everyone's machine are inside. So first of all, let me log into Tom's laptop. And this is Tom's laptop. Uh, Tom's laptop uh, is this. And now let me log into Jerry's laptop. Okay, so uh, you can see Tom here, it means it's Tom's laptop. Jerry here, it means it's Jerry's laptop. And then what I will do is uh, on his laptop, Tom is going to execute this command. If Tom is using Linux, this is the command he can use to create a key pair. If he is using Windows, you can use putty gen to do that. 
so anyone in the world can create a key pair it is it is absolutely free so run the command as a search key gen then you know it will ask you for uh, where you want to store the keys just you know keep the default location press enter and uh, you know keep pressing enter then at the end you would see this is the private key file if you open this file in a nano editor you would be able to see a private key and this is the public key if you open this file in a nano editor you can see one public key so this is a key pair private public key pair and this public key i will copy to the git server later and that i will do later first of all on jerry's laptop let me run the same command as a search key gen and create a key pair jerry also created a private key and the public key they both created private and public keys and now i want to copy their public key so take their public key this is it this is Tom's public key and similarly uh, this is Jerry's public key. You can get the public key from here. Right above Tom's and Jerry's public key I have with me. Now I will copy both this public key into the remote git server. Let me log into the remote git server. Okay, I'm going to log into the remote git server, uh, the AWS machine. And, you know, I will tell you what is the location where the public key should be kept in the remote machine. This is the remote machine. Maybe I will give it some coloring. Um, one second. Uh, yeah. The red color machine, right? Uh, the red color uh, tab over here. It is the git server. So inside this machine, uh, what I will do is right now I am inside slash home slash git folder. You type ls minus a. There is one folder. Okay, there is no such folder. You must create a folder called dot ssh. This must be the folder name. And you create a folder dot ssh. And inside the dot ssh folder, you create a file with the name authorized keys. This must be the file name on the remote machine where you will store the public key you should keep public key of both tom and jerry at this location then both tom and jerry can ssh to this remote machine so uh, that's what i am going to do i copy the public key of tom paste it here and similarly i copy the public key of jerry and paste it here so this is the way how it works and now I copied both Tom's public key and Jerry's public key into the remote machine and now both Tom and Jerry will be able to SSH to uh, git user on this machine if you want to try you can try I am going to log out from the git server I don't need to be inside the git server anymore right now you know there are two machines i am working on one is tom's laptop and one is jerry's laptop maybe for tom's laptop i would give some color so that you will easily understand uh, you can easily identify the green color one this is tom's laptop and the gray color one is jerry's laptop all right so on tom's laptop what i am going to do is i'm going to from tom's laptop i try to ssh to the remote server as git user so uh, you know the command for ssh this is only for testing purpose all right don't worry about the git part uh, uh, testing should work right uh, i'm just testing if tom is able to ssh to the remote git server that is what i am trying to do so i try to ssh to the git server using the ip address of it you can use private ip public ip is also fine right it's your aws machine so from tom's laptop you are trying to ssh to the remote repository machine check if it is working or not yes it's working you are able to ssh now you are logged into the remote repository machine i'm going to log out from there i am back to tom's laptop this was just for a testing purpose and the authentication is now successful tom's laptop successfully connected to 
the remote repository machine. Similarly for Jerry's laptop as well. All right, so yesterday Tom already made some commits and now Tom want to push his commits, right? Currently, if you remember yesterday, Tom had made some commits on his laptop, right? He, he added some file and he, after adding the file, you know, first he performed the add operation to select the file and then he performed the commit operation uh, to commit them. And then he used the remote add command to add the URL of the remote repository. The remote repository has a URL, a URL that would look something like this. The IP address of the machine would be there in the URL. The username git would be there in the URL and also the name of the repository that you created in the remote repository machine. So these three things included there is a URL and yesterday we already added that URL as origin to Tom's laptop. So now Tom's laptop know where to push and now we have enabled the authentication as well. So whatever commits Tom have on his laptop, now they can be pushed to the remote repository. So let us try if it is working. Tom is going to SSH, I mean push uh, to the remote repository whatever commits he have locally. So let's take a look. And you know, uh, first of all, Tom will go to his project folder. A retail project is the folder Tom created on his laptop and that folder contains the code, whatever he created, right? And git status command will show you if there are any change which Tom made, which has yet to be committed. So if you don't see any output, what that means is whatever files Tom have in his folder, they are committed to git. The only operation pending is push, right? No changes right now. Tom have not made any changes since the last commit. Yesterday we made a commit from Tom's laptop, right? After that, Tom has not made any modification. If there was anything, it would show up in the output of git status command. Right now, whatever Tom have in his folder, it is there in his local repository as well. And if you want to know what are the commits done, run the command git log. Git log is a command every developer on their laptop they can execute. And it would show you what are the commits made so far. So in our case, there's only one commit created by Tom, right? Created by Tom, you can see who is the author of the commit and at what time commit was made. You can see it was done yesterday. I mean, uh, on Friday and every commit get one unique commit ID and also the command added by the developer. In this case, it's Tom. So uh, technically what this means is Tom, Tom had made a commit locally within his local repository and this is that commit. But if you remember, this commit is never pushed to the remote repository and that is exactly what Tom is going to do. Tom will execute this command, git push origin master. So I will tell you what a master is. Uh, don't worry about it for the time being. So this is the command Tom always run when he want to push from his laptop to the remote repository. This time yesterday we got a permission error, but this time it will succeed. Yes, it succeeded. You have successfully pushed the commit which is there in Tom's laptop. How many commits were there? There was only one commit. The commit have been pushed into the remote repository successfully. The authentication works behind the background, right? Behind the skin, as seen, it is SSH that is used by Git. So Tom is successfully able to push the code to the remote repository. So all good.
All right. So let us now go to the next topic. Basil, uh, so first we copy the public key, private key um, into the uh, remote server and then, then we will be able to push the code from our uh, machine, right? That's right. That's what we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let us go to our next topic today. Push and pull operation. How uh, Tom and Jerry will do the push and pull operations to the uh, remote computer, right? That is, that's what we are going to do next. So, so now Tom made the first push operation already. And uh, now the, this is the current status, uh, Tom. Tom had a commit on his local, local. Uh, how many commit? Uh, there was one commit. And now that commit is pushed into remote. Now the remote has one commit. And uh, probably Tom can do more commits, you know, that's what Tom will keep doing. I'm going to do one more commit within Tom's computer. So assume Tom is assigned with some new work and Tom is doing his job. He want to make some more code modification. So what I will do is I will download some sample code from internet. Okay. I'm simply downloading some sample code from the internet because you know, rather than writing it myself, it would be better. Uh, I would download the sample code from internet. I have some sample code, some good code. I will use that. This is a useful code for our learning. Uh, I will send you the URL. Yeah. This is the code. Um, so use this code. I am sending the code uh, in the chat. You can also download it. And you can download it from here, you know, uh, click on the code button and then click on download zip. Then what happens is it will start downloading. I just want to copy the link address and then I just want to copy the link address and Tom will download this code uh, to his laptop uh, into the repository folder. That is where I want to keep it. So go to Tom's laptop. Go to Tom's laptop and run the wget command on Tom's laptop. Then the code get downloaded to his laptop. And this is a setar.gz uh, file. No, it's a zip file, I think. Yeah. So to unzip a zip file, the command is unzip space the file name. The downloaded file name is master. So to unzip that file, you run the command unzip space master and yeah, unfortunately unzip need to be installed currently unzip is not installed so let me do that let me log out from tom tom don't have apt get permission so it has to be ubuntu user and i'm going to install unzip as ubuntu user on tom's laptop yeah it is done now let me uh, let me go to tom's uh, folder and now let me unzip it and zip space master and now what happened is the entire project is unzipped into this particular folder yeah whatever the folder name is maybe uh, from that folder i will copy everything to my current folder okay so everything in that folder i moved them to my current folder dot means current folder and now i can delete this folder now, uh, okay. All right, so what I did this, I just downloaded some sample code from the internet, sorry, from the internet. And now I have them within my, uh, within my 
uh, working copy tom have them within his working copy so it is some sample code that he downloaded if you run the command git status you know git have no idea what these files are tom you know assume tom have written all this code whatever i downloaded assume tom have written all this code and he haven't uh, committed the code yet right he must make a commit operation until then git have no idea what these files are and that is why the q2 question marks are coming git have no idea these are new files git don't know what to do with them so what the first thing what tom does is he is adding all the files one by one master we don't need but all these folders we need i am adding them all one by one and then i will delete the file master i don't need that now you run the command git status minus s now all the files you know each and every file within each of these folders and now they have been added into the uh, the git right they have been added into git and now it is time to make a commit if i make a commit then whatever changes i added whatever files i added they would get committed so i would mention downloaded a sample code from internet to begin with you know it's it's, it's all about uh, he want to start the project from this sample code right so he add some meaningful command every time tom create a commit he will add some meaningful command so this is the second commit tom is creating but remember he haven't pushed the commits yet only one commit is pushed so far so the remote repository contains only one commit and tom's repository contains multiple commits uh, right uh, two commits so the second commit is yet to be pushed to the remote repository and that is exactly what tom is currently doing currently the status is the tom's laptop uh, it has two commits this is tom's laptop that has two commits the remote repository has only one commit pushed by tom and the second commit need to be copied into the remote repository so that it would become two so uh, tom is going to do a push operation the push operation will copy the second commit along not the first commit first commit is already copied only the second commit get copied when you do the push operation it is incremental right every time you do the push or pull it is the difference that get copied not the entire commits so uh, let us do that and uh, tom is going to run this command git push origin master and and that's it now the second commit also got copied into the remote repository machine and how about jerry's laptop does jerry's laptop has any commits in it no jerry has not done any pull operation so what i am going to do from jerry's computer is okay uh, let me log into jerry's computer so this is jerry's computer and assume uh, now jerry want to create a new folder on his laptop and that is where he want to work but you were expecting that i would do a full operation from jerry's computer and not instead i am going to do this a clone operation git clone then you specify the remote repository url git clone space then git at the right and then you specify the ip address of the remote machine ip address of the git server what is that it's you know you can get it from your aws console you can get the private ip and uh, at the rate then uh, then you specify the ip address and then retail underscore project the name of the repository that you created what this command does is it will connect to this remote repository it will basically the clone command will set up jerry's laptop from the scratch assume jerry is a new developer in the team 
and he want to start working on the retail project so in order to run the pull command first of all jerry how to set up everything right jerry must you know create a local repository first after creating the local repository he need to create a folder within his laptop where he want to keep the code he should enable the authentication he should add the origin he, then he will do the pull command so instead of all this complexity i'm just doing only one thing from jerry's laptop just execute the command git clone then the url of the remote repository i will tell you what will happen in this case what happens is on jerry's laptop it will set up everything from scratch it will add the origin whatever url that you are specifying that would be added as the origin on jerry's laptop a folder get created or you can say the working copy folder get created on jerry's laptop and that folder would contain all the code whatever tom had and also all the commits you know in our case two commits which are available on the remote repository that would get copied to the local repository and automatically the local repository get created like that a local repository will be created within jerry's computer with two commits in it so all these four operations you don't have to do it manually the clone command will set up jerry's computer from the scratch and now jerry's computer is ready to do the push and pull operation just like how tom have been doing now jerry can also start doing the push and pull operations so it is as simple as that so generally a new developer joins the team or you know due to some problem you want to again restart from scratch you can do the clone operation it is as simple as running one command right so jerry is going to run a simple command git clone followed by the url and yes he is connecting first time that's why this warning is coming give yes then just wait now you can see the entire thing got uh, cloned into jerry's laptop jerry typed the command unless he can see a folder got created automatically jerry go to that folder and type the command ls minus a the dot git that means the local repository got created within jerry's laptop all the files has come to jerry's laptop jerry run the git log command jerry can see there are two commits made uh, for this project all both commits has come to jerry's laptop so all these things would happen at one shot or in other words the entire remote repository get cloned into jerry's computer if you perform a clone command so what is the difference between clone and pull if jerry had run the pull command so the people who already have the local repository run the pull command right jerry didn't have a local repository on his laptop yet what pull command will do jerry had uh, zero commit the remote repository has two commits the two commits get copied to jerry the pull operation will do that but first jerry must create a local repository if jerry don't have a local repository clone command will set up everything from the scratch from now we won't use clone command we will use push and pull always jerry and tom they both would be using push and pull operation but clone command is used you know whenever you want to start fresh or a new developer joins your team and he want to uh, start working clone operation is much helpful and very handy right so that's what uh, it is so now jerry can start doing the pull operation so now jerry found that there are two commits and who made this commit tom made the commit all this information jerry can see when tom made the commit what is the command added by tom so now jerry is curious you know what tom have been doing on this particular commit jerry will run this command git show space commit id and now jerry can see the exact code changes which tom did on this particular commit the first commit what tom made you know uh, from the command jerry understood what tom was doing initial changes to set up 
shopping cart and order management program and now he ran the show command for that commit id to see the exact lines of code so now jerry noticed that there is a new file in the src folder orders.java created by tom and then there is a retail.java created by tom with this content right every changes jerry will be able to see now and now jerry decided that okay there is a problem in the orders.java folder you know tom did not do something right so some a code change is needed so jerry will open that file he will fix the problem you know he is adding some code and fixing the problem and now he saved his file now git status command would on jerry's computer would say there is a change jerry made some change right after he uh, did the clone now his uh, folder has some change which is yet to be committed so what jerry will do is he will use the git add command to add this file and he will do the commit command to commit his changes right so there was an issue issue with tom's change uh, jerry corrected it so he is putting some meaningful command for the future reference every time a commit happens you know you are actually creating a record you are creating a history of record every commit becomes a history of the code changes just like tom's friday change jerry is able to check what tom was working on on friday right and similarly whatever commit jerry is making or any developer is making that become a permanent record that would be stored in git and that's what jerry is doing okay jerry has to introduce himself jerry cannot make the commit unless he introduce himself so i'm just putting the email id and password uh, name of jerry git want to know who is making the commit so that's why i'm doing this now uh, jerry can make the commit and uh, now what happened now jerry has total three commits uh, remote repository has only two tom has only two because jerry is yet to push and that's what jerry is going to do jerry is going to do a push operation by running the same command what tom did on his computer jerry is running on his computer right now the status is jerry has three commits total on jerry's laptop there are uh, three commits total and on remote repository only two on tom's laptop only two so jerry has to do a push operation and now this would become three then tom has to do a pull operation then this becomes three right so this is the way how it works and uh, and now let me do that Uh, yeah uh, once jerry did the push now the remote repository has three uh, but tom's laptop it still has only two git log command on tom's laptop you run it or command i got this connected let me connect again Okay, and the one with a uh, green color is Tom's laptop. All right, uh, sorry. Yeah, one with the green color is Tom's laptop. And now Tom run the command git log on his laptop. He's the only two commits. He must run the command git pull origin master. Instead of push, it now become pull and it would download the latest commit. So uh, previously it was two on Tom's laptop. Now the third one got copied. Now Tom run the git log command. Now there is three. Right? Now there are three commits in tom's laptop so yeah that's that's how they will do the push and pull operation so basil if uh, jerry has like three commit 
commits and at that time let's say if tom does something which is 2.1 commit then tom's code is absolute uh, like tom is very uh, we will we will come to that okay okay sure thank you Yeah, like basically, initially we use, uh, I mean, uh, git remote adder or... Okay, guys, so just give me, uh, I will take your questions after a short break. Uh, I'm sorry. Just need five minutes. Okay. Uh, okay I'll sir, take okay. it. Okay. Thank you, miss. Uh, five minutes, please.